Hey everybody, today I want to make a very comprehensive video on social anxiety and take it to a depth that you don't really see on the internet. So, essentially, if you're in a place where you're feeling helplessness, you're maybe you've watched uh, heaps of social anxiety help videos on how to how to like treat all these superficial band aid issues that you're running into with social anxiety and all this sort of stuff, this this isn't going to be that video at all. And social anxiety is something that I am definitely, I have a wealth of information on. So, this video, if you're asking yourself, like, what's in it for me by watching this longer format video, uh, I'm basically just sharing everything that I've learned on overcoming social anxiety. I'll say in quotes, overcoming, because I'll come back to that later, but it's going to make sense. Um, Everything that I've learned in the past maybe like eight years or so, probably since I was 18, I'm 26 now, on overcoming it at a very deep level. Like, we're not going to go superficial here. We're going right to the depth. So, if you have social anxiety, this is like everything I wish I would have I would have known. And I have nothing to sell you. I, I'm not trying to like um, sell a course to you or anything. This is just something I care so deeply about because... I remember growing up, and I'll get into my story, but just so you can know, know where I'm coming from, uh, I remember growing up feeling like social anxiety is just the most agonizing thing. It affects everything in your life, from like your workplace, uh, even your relationships with your family, uh, and just like your ability to show up in life can be seriously limited if this is something that's been pervasive for you, social anxiety. So, yeah, we're going to go deep. And uh, I hope you're going along, come along the journey with me. And it's going to be pretty raw, pretty unfiltered. I've got some notes here that I considered before making the video just to streamline things and not waste your time. Um, but yeah, and I also want to point out one other thing that... So, the fact that you've clicked on this video and you've watched this far tells me that social anxiety is something you are struggling with. And... This is a bit of a taboo topic and you might even be feeling a bit squeamish in your body right now like, oh God, like we're actually going to go there. We're going to go to the depths. But um, another thing I want to point out is if you've been watching YouTube videos and reading books and all sorts of things and um, sort of helplessly in a way looking for a solution to this problem and maybe, maybe you've been meditating for like two hours a day for years and you're still coming into contact with this and don't really have a um, understanding of it and like how to actually get and deal with it. Uh, that's a long-winded way of saying that the, your tendency of your mind will be to distract yourself. So, you probably might have already checked the comments of this video and you may have even considered clicking off this video to going to another video, right? So, my, my invitation to you right now is to become familiar with that feeling that wants to sort of keep bouncing around looking for distractions, right? So, there's an actual feeling in your body that is sort of saying like, okay, you, this video is getting a bit boring right now and it's looking for something to fill that void, to distract yourself, to go to the next video or, or whatever. Uh, so, to click off this video and just keep in mind as you watch this video, that tendency is going to come up a lot. Like, then that's why I'm probably going to remind you every so often just, just to come into contact with that, to notice it for what it is. So, just take 30 seconds. My invitation to you is to take 30 seconds and give yourself permission to. Like, if you, if you no longer want to watch this video, you feel like it's not providing value for you, okay, that's fine. Click off the video. But just take 30 seconds to sit with that emotion of like discomfort, of restlessness that says it's basically saying like, click off this video. It's go watch like some other spiritual video or some other video of that nature, right? <laughs> so, with that out of the way, uh, essentially the way I'm going to break this video down is I'm going to give a bit of story on uh, how I I've got to this position now where I feel like I can confidently talk about uh, working with social anxiety, getting to the root of it, uh, and then just sort of expand upon some essential mindsets that I've found to be incredibly valuable. And this might sound a bit foundational and uh, maybe you've done a lot of work or maybe you have no idea and you're only just familiarizing yourself with the fact that maybe social anxiety is something that you have. Um, 
yeah, we're going to cover everything and I'm going to put some heavy emphasis on body work. So getting involved with the body and maybe you don't even know what that means yet. Uh, and some, we'll get right into some practices, uh, with some, with some practical examples on how you can actually work with it. So by the end of this video, you're essentially going to have a complete comprehensive like toolkit and path forward on how you can begin working with this very challenging and very demeaning uh, pervasive issue in our culture, actually. It's it's not like some, it's taboo to talk about because it's human nature to want validation and to be like, oh, I have it together, everything's fine, which is normal. Um, but the reality is that so many people are suffering with social anxiety. And if you've, if you've had an inclination at say like a party or anything like that to, to say even like drink alcohol, chances are it's because you feel social anxiety, right? But it's just become culturally appropriated to like not talk about this and act like we have it all together, which is complete bullshit. But, um, you know, I also empathize with that. There's nothing wrong with like wanting to act like we have it all together as well. So, uh, or drinking alcohol for that matter. Uh, so I'm not here to demonize any of that, but yeah, with that out of the way, let me just tell you a little bit about my story and my story isn't one to essentially, I'm not here to like bloat about my experience or like play the victim or anything like that. I just want to give you like, I've done enough emotional work on myself now and I know enough people in these very like authentic spheres that I'm a part of that. I just don't really give a shit anymore. Like, I'm, I'm happy to share a, a bit about my, <laughs> um, I guess, troubled side because all I really care about now is authenticity, uh, realizing who I am at a deep level and cutting through the bullshit. So, uh, basically, my story is one that, you know, I, I, I grew up with um, two parents two brothers, uh, never really like the classic nuclear family, you know, didn't by appearances have much wrong with it other than the fact that my you know parents separated when I was eight, uh, which probably had a slew of uh, things that impacted me. And, um, but by all appearances, like I had a pretty normal upbringing and you know, I, I can remember growing up through up till I was in about grade five or six, just really happy, you know, like, I had a lot of uh, childlike spontaneity and innocence and, um, but one thing that uh, I noticed was that as soon as I hit puberty uh, or I started getting into like, uh, I believe it, I, I, my earliest memory of doing the work was when I was in grade five or about, about grade five in school. And I remember like just innocently, a girl said to me, you know, I was just being like my playful, uh, popular self. I was like the popular kid in the group in school, right? Like I was the leader of the pack. <laughs> um, I remember this girl saying to me like, Sam, you're weird. You know how girls say that shit? Like you're weird, <laughs> just playfully. And um, it's not actually how the magnitude of the seeming event that matters. It's how our nervous system interprets it. And I remember for whatever reason, at that point in my life, the causes and conditions lined up so that when that girl said that, it really hurt me as a kid. And I, and I remember thinking like, you know what? I'm never going to be weird again. And from that moment, I remember putting on this mask, this front, and all of a sudden I became this like people pleasy nice guy <laughs> from then on. <laughs> Uh, and, and I literally remember having one of my good friends, George, say to me, um, I remember him, Georgie, uh, he said, Sam, you're different, you know, like, because I, I started acting differently and I started putting on this front and um, yeah. So, and then from then on, I remember that was like a very significant event from then on. I always felt like an alien, like I had to like earn people's validation from that. Um, had to earn people's validation to, to just feel normal. And I didn't have the words for it or the context for it. And only in the past couple of years have I, would I be able to put words on it like that. But from then on, like, you know, high school was fucking excruciating for me. You know, people, some people seem to reflect on high school like it was the, like this awesome time of their life and even like university and stuff like that. But for me, 
like I can <sighs> going to school was especially in the later years of high school from like grade 10 to grade 12 was excruciating like I remember going every day just feeling like oh god like why me um and I didn't have words for it at the time right like I, I just struggled to connect with people, to feel like authentic, like myself. And I felt like such an alien, such an alien every single day uh, with no escape. And I remember just being like super fidgety and like up in my head all the time, just uh, like in lunch breaks and things like that, thinking like, why can't I, why can't I fucking, why can't I connect with people? And again, like at that time, I didn't really know that's what I was even doing, right? Like I was just so emotionally repressed and so in my, oh shit, and so in my head that, yeah, um, I just felt like an alien and, you know, I did things, I did my best to stay afloat. And in fact, what was, what was interesting though, was I developed a persona that this front, this mime mask that I described earlier, and it just kept iterating upon itself. And it got to a point where that actually started becoming validated by other people. And it was socially reinforced to be this fake version of myself that wasn't actually congruent with my emotions and what I, how I actually thought or felt about others. So, I be, my, my persona became this like vehicle in which I interface with the world that was unauthentic, but it was socially reinforced so that I kept acting that way and further disconnect, disconnecting myself from my body and my authentic expression, which created more social anxiety and more social anxiety. And when I say it was reinforced, I mean that like it was literally reinforced to the point that I became a school captain at my school. Like there's like four people selected in the grade um, to be school captains out of however, uh, however other many people. And I was one of them, right? So, the social mask that I developed was good <laughs> um, by all appearances. But the funny thing was, like, here I was speaking, uh, doing assemblies in front of 600 people. And, you know, I don't say this to bloat my ego. Like, it's kind of, I, I just look back on it with fascination in a way. Um, and, but I just felt so miserable and shitty and angsty in my own experience internally. And, um, you know, it, it sort of felt like I could connect with people for a little bit, but when I, when I spent a lot of time with them, the jig was up and they sort of started seeing through my identity, my ego, and I, I couldn't be around them for long. So, I was very good at connecting with people superficially, but then as soon as it got into a long-term relationship or something, um, it just fell apart. At least that's what it felt like for me. So, if you relate to any of that, uh, you're not alone. You're not alone. <laughs> um, yeah. And it continued on like that, you know, and I'll, I won't go on with my story for too much longer because I, I just, but I really want to set the stage for what it's like to be with social anxiety and to empathize with you on how this can show up because this is like, I can sort of smile about it now, but it was so painful to be going to school every single day and beyond that to university and to the workplace feeling like just and not even having the, the context for it. So, I just want to normalize this that, yeah, like it can be brutal and it affects every aspect and facet of your life. And I'm sure you know that by this stage, otherwise you wouldn't be this far in the video and you probably would have clicked off by now. So, yeah, uh, and I just want to say as well that continuing on, you know, I was, I was working as a cardiac technician, I went to university and in the workplace, oh my God, like even there, uh, that was probably the most painful time of my life when I was, pro I think I must have been about 22 when I was so emotionally repressed and I was sort of becoming more aware of the fact that, okay, there probably is something wrong with me, right? It took that long for me to actually start to realize like, holy crap, something's wrong here. Um, yeah, and up until that point, it was just so, so painful. But I started at that point identifying that, okay, there's, there's probably a problem here. You know, I'm going to work every day and I'm ending the day with like sweaty palms and I'm really tense in my body and I... 
like what's going on here so i started developing um getting into things like self-help uh, like i've got all the <laughs> and i've got the proof to show it i've done all these drawings here like jordan peterson uh what do we got sam harris joe rogan jocko willink david goggins you know all these like archetypal masculine dudes uh who i i got into uh and i'm like all right i'm gonna fix this motherfucking problem of sam right so i started doing self-help um attending workshops like you know i i, I went hard right i was committed to fixing this problem <laughs> So, I did self-improvement workshops and I'm talking like, you know, hardcore self-improvement, like men's retreats. Uh, I did two rites of passages where I, where I went to, I can have some water here, I keep having these voice cracks. <laughs> Something I used to be really humiliated about, um, voice cracks, but I don't really give a shit anymore. <clears throat> so yeah I started doing these self-improvement workshops like you know really looking into the shadow of my psychology looking at all the things that I denied and repressed uh, you know which was helpful it, it was helpful but it didn't really get to the root and we're gonna get to the root but um yeah and just from my own experience and started doing all these self-help workshops, watching YouTube videos, Jordan Peterson, you know, trying to create a healthy ego and all this stuff. But you know what? Like, no matter how much self-help I did, no matter how many men's circles I went to, how much like emotional processing I did. Uh, and, you know, and, and I went to, and I should also mention, I did these Vipassana retreats. I did three 10-day Vipassana meditation retreats where you sit in silence for 10 hours a day meditating. And I had a daily meditation practice of two hours. But you know what? Social anxiety, if anything, got worse with all of those practices. Because now, not only was I socially anxious, but I was cripplingly aware <laughs> of how socially anxious I was by doing these Vipassana meditation retreats and these um, men's group workshops and I could never figure out, you know, I was sitting in circle with all these guys and I was always thought to myself, like, how, how are they doing that? Like, how are they so confident and so like, I don't know, they just look like they have their shit together and here I am sitting in this circle, just so anxious. Like, you know, we do check-ins, so you go around the circle and you say like, I'm checking in feeling uh, anger, sadness, happiness. Uh, and here's why he's a little bit about it. I was like, always just like, I just feel anxious. <laughs> like, so like, I just want to jump out of my skin right now. And I was almost like ashamed of the fact that I felt so anxious all the time. Yeah. So yeah, the, the fundamental question was always scratching at the back of my mind, like what's wrong with me? And I really thought there was something wrong with me even with all the meditation, all the self-help and everything, right? Now, fast forward to the past like two or three years, uh, what, I, what I really began to notice and shift within myself is I recruited more tools and just understood more about myself. So, I'm not saying the self-help or the meditation was bad or anything. And I, you know, I've stayed so consistent with meditation for ages because I've really had this existential feeling of just being alien in this lifetime for so long that I'm committed to do anything, you know, just to feel normal, really. And just to be in, in an authentic place with other humans and just with myself in general that I've really committed myself to it. So, I don't wear it as a badge of honor. I'm just like, it is what it is. But it, yeah, it's like... Um, yeah, so where was I? I'm just going to cut. <laughs> no, I'm not going to cut because, uh, there's a lot to talk about. Yeah. So I've learned a lot basically. And now I want to share with you what actually works to get through or what's worked for me and what I'll get to later is I want to show you that you can trust yourself to know how to get there for you. 
you, you don't need me to tell you how to how to like help yourself. What I want to show you is that you have everything within you to do the work that is going to unravel and will ad- ultimately address this social anxiety problem that you have. <laughs> and I'm uh, doing this quotation marks because it's like, oh man, if, if I could say to my, if, if I could really understand at a young age that it's it's not me, it's not just me, then that would be one of the big things that I, w- I would tell myself. So, that's actually a good segue into the fact that the first thing that most people have when they have social anxiety, the, like this core belief is that there is something so broken and so wrong about me. And it's, there's something just so wrong about the way that I'm experiencing the world and myself. And it's all my fault. Like, why the hell am I so, why can't I connect with people? Like, why do I go to these social gatherings and go to the workplace? And I always just feel like, like, wow, what's wrong with me, right? That's the core belief that most people who have social anxiety have. And I had that for a long time. But especially if you have somewhat of a meditation practice or you've steeped yourself in self-help, um, there's a good chance that you're probably a sensitive person. And I don't say that as a, like, you know, sensitive sensitivity has this negative stigma in a way that, oh, you're so sensitive, man. Like, why are you so sensitive? Just harden up. Sip a co- cup of concrete, you pussy. I mean, I don't know, whatever people say or whatever, you know, distorted beliefs we received growing up. But the reality is, is the human body is a very sensitive sort of like antenna, right? We are wired for hundreds of thousands of years to be social creatures, right? So, we are very sensitive to other humans' emotions and feelings, right? But our culture and our cultural norm essentially tells us that we're not. Like, we're these little islands, these little separate islands apart from each other that aren't connected at all. And if you have any internal, you've got this isolated, internalized experience that isn't connected to other humans, which is just so unbelievably untrue that it's not funny at all. And most people know this. Have you ever heard the saying that, like, you can cut, uh, you can feel the tension in the air or I can feel the tension in the air, right? Or maybe something like, and you, you have these intuitive moments where say you, you see someone and you instantly know like, oh, they're having a bad day. Even if you're like really emotionally repressed, which again, we'll get, we'll get back to isn't a bad thing. Most people are in our culture. I was for many, many years. And I'm still learning to unravel that. But even then, it's we have sensitivity to other people and it's okay that we're sensitive. And what I know now growing up was that I was incredibly sensitive and I am incredibly sensitive to other humans. And the more that we do this work, the more that we do emotion work, emotional processing, shadow work, meditation practice the more sensitive you become because what you're doing is you're reconnecting to your humanity, to your actual authentic natural state. But the the only downside is, and you can call it a downside, but it's actually grace, is that you're going to start feeling everything, everyone and everything, and that's okay. You're becoming human again in a way. <laughs> Um, but for a long time, yeah, like I had this belief that I thought there was something wrong with me when I was doing all this emotion work and emotional processing. And the most important thing that I just want to point out to the person who's listening to this video right now, who's struggling with social anxiety is it's not you. It's not just you. Okay. You as a sensitive person, which again, isn't bad, are likely feeling a lot of the repressed emotions and shit that other people are carrying. 
Now, I remember when I heard that, that was a huge revelation for me. When I listened to my teacher, my primary teacher that I consume uh, wisdom from, Angelo DeLulo, amazing, amazing guy. Uh, He runs a channel called Simply Always Awake. I remember him just saying that and like, it almost moved me to tears because my whole fucking life, I thought that there was something wrong with me in social situations. And the fact that I was feeling like contracted and um, like just so alien all the time, it like, it just moved me to tears, right? Just let that in for a second. If you have social anxiety, there's a really good chance that it's nothing to do with you. Sure, you have parts to play and you have your own conditioning and we'll talk about this. But largely, you're very likely feeling a lot of the emotional um, landscape around you. And what your mind is doing is saying like, oh God, you're feeling what other people are feeling. Like, you know, they're walking around with their happy smiles. Like, oh yeah, look how together I have it. Look how happy I am. Look look at my Mercedes Benz. Look at how, look at all this, you know, we talk and we, we, have, we talk about the weather, but then you're looking at this person and you're feeling underneath this front that they have on what they're feeling, which is like, I don't want to be seen. You're feeling their shame. You're feeling their anger maybe if you've ever been around someone who's like really angry and you can and they're putting on a fake smile you know how uncomfortable that is but our society has it's it's the norm to repress our emotions so a sensitive person walks around the world basically feeling like it, t- turning all of that emotion like what's wrong with me but you're just basically the sense antenna largely feeling a lot of other people's stuff now, it's, again, it's not just that. So, it's not, we're not playing the blame, the, <clears throat> the blame game here. Need another drink of water. We're not playing the blame game here and blaming other people. That is critical to understand. Because it's not like those people who are emotionally repressed are saying to themselves like, oh man, you know what? I really want to repress my anger today. You know, and they, it's like they chose that, right? No, <laughs> nobody chose anything. You Just like you didn't choose to be socially anxious. It's not like you woke up one day and you're like, you know what? Hey, God, God, brother, just give me um, crippling social anxiety <laughs> and have it, have it affect every facet of my life. <laughs> no, you didn't do that. So, <laughs> um, and I laugh and I, and I know how it's not funny. Like, trust me, I, I, I really know how social anxiety is, can be debilitating. But um, yeah, it's not like they chose it. So, the first thing we need to do is, um, and man, I'm just transitioning seamlessly into my dot points here. Um, Essential mindsets is you have to take radical ownership of the fact that you have social anxiety. That's one of the core things that I've learned is that you must take radical ownership. No matter how repressed somebody is and you're feeling their discomfort, you have to take ownership for it because ultimately we're not separate from other humans. There's no separation between us. We are, human nature is oneness in its natural state, is connectedness with other people. But ultimately you can't just like go over to someone and say like, stop feeling so repressed, like shake it out of them or shake the devil out of them or beat the devil out of it as Bob Ross would say or whatever. Um, You can't do that. You have to take radical ownership because you have everything within you to cut through social anxiety, but you just need the context for it and a little bit of a nudge in the right direction and to normalize it and make it less taboo. So, let's continue on to some other essential mindsets. I'm a big believer in with this social anxiety work that you have to do what works for you. No matter what somebody tells you, Ultimately, you have to start trusting yourself. You know, for so long, I would be talking with teachers, watching YouTube videos or uh, reading books and just constantly looking out and seeking for the answer. Like, oh God, there's something so broken with me. Like, this person will save me. Oh, they didn't save me. All right, this person will save me. He didn't save me. And, And, you know, like, 
and I still, that's something I still deal with actually is like, I catch up with one of my, uh, my facilitators who, um, uh, Violet, uh, Angelo DeLulo's partner, the gentleman I mentioned earlier, and she, she's gorgeous, gorgeous person, gorgeous human. But, um, that pattern sometimes comes up for me where I feel like I don't trust myself. If I'm talking to Violet and I'm having a conversation with her, it's like, uh, this is how my experience is going. And then meanwhile, and I can feel it in my body. I'm like, oh, but there's something not right about that. And I need to fix it or something like that. And I, I give my, it's almost like I can give my power over to, uh, and not trust my experience. So learning to trust your experience, not what I tell you, but your own experience is something that our culture is so disconnected from our gut feelings right? You imagine being out in the African savannah back in a thousand years ago and you didn't trust your gut feelings, right? You would be dead. (laughs) You would be killed by tigers. Like say you have an intuition to, you know, say move this way or move that way and you don't listen to that. And then before you know it, a tiger's on your back mauling you to death. (laughs) Um, But our, our society is so perpetually told and subliminally subliminally communicated to that we shouldn't trust our instincts so if you're feeling an instinctual pull right now that like you know sam's giving me bad vibes or something i don't trust this guy and you don't resonate with what i'm saying then you know trust it like click off this video um if you feel like i'm missing something then okay like maybe there's some part of you that is watching this video and you're like, I feel like you missed something that I really relate to in my experience. Then don't listen to me. Trust yourself. Like, I learned this one thing from this one guy and he really impacted me positively. For the love of God, trust that and follow that to the root. Like, don't just listen to me and like put all of this expectation on me that I'm going to be your savior or whatever which is you ultimately you have to be your own savior. It's all an internal jig. This whole thing is an internal game that you have to play. And unfortunately, but fortunately, and you will come to know this, you've been given this hand of social anxiety. And I know how debilitating it is for you, but it's, this is going to be the thing that's going to wake you up. And this is going to be the thing that's going to connect you at a very deep level. Maybe it's going to take a couple months, it might take a couple years, but you're going to reconnect to deep authenticity. And this is your portal. This discomfort that you're feeling every single day is your, is your highway to radical authenticity, radical connection with other people and to be an asset to your community. I don't say that lightly. I mean, that's what it feels like. It's where it's moving me as I still work through this sort of stuff. So, yeah, um, that's the next thing to, to work on is embracing social anxiety, right? This is the next mindset. And I'm just having this thought in the back of my mind right now that, damn, I'm just transitioning seamlessly here, like little self-congratulatory thought or something. Um, which is funny, but anyway, next thing is, yeah. So radical acceptance of the social anxiety is critical. What if I told you, if I asked you the question right now to, if you could live with social anxiety for the rest of your life, real, actually this, just take a second with that too. I'll, I'll, and if you have like this feeling of I got to keep watching, just I'm going to do it with you. Intone that in, in yourself right now. I can live with social anxiety for the rest of my life. What does your body say to you right now when you do that? Chances are it's probably like, hell no. Like, bro, I'm watching a video on how to overcome social anxiety. Why would I, why would I ever want to live with it for the rest of my life? And it might actually deflate you a little bit because what if the answer was yes, you did have to answer. You did have to live with social anxiety for the rest of your life. Does that deflate you? Does that make you want to click off this video? 
Because, right, you want to get rid of that shit. You want to cleave it out of your experience and wish it was never there and fix your broken self. Like I did. Um, But I'm telling you right now, if you have that attitude, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. You have to become essentially the parent that you were never given to your own self. You have to take all of those broken children, all those parts of you that contribute to the, the monster that is social anxiety and you have to love them and see them for what they are so fully and so deeply and take it all the way to the root. And have immense patience for this. Because as soon as you do some of the practices or something that I'm going to introduce later to work with this social anxiety. And you have the attitude of, I got to get rid of this shit. I don't want this anymore. I got to get rid of it out of my experience. And look, there's actually (laughs) nothing. There's a bit of a paradox here, but there's nothing wrong with that too. Because that also has a view. It's like, I just want relief. That view, that part of you can also be here too, right? But the radical acceptance of being totally okay with being socially anxious is both terrifying and absolutely freeing. I remember hearing advice from like people like Tara Brach, who's a famous meditation teacher. And she has this uh, system, it's called the RAIN, R-A-I-N, recognize, accept, investigate and nurture. And I remember like with social anxiety in particular, I remember hearing that, okay, I have to, I have to accept, I have to just accept this part of me. Right. But I remember like taking that out into the field, going into the workplace and just being like, there's no way I can accept this. How the hell am I going to let in social anxiety when it's just so crippling? Like, I feel like whenever I talk to anybody, there's this, this vortex of contraction and I can't be myself. My palm get, palms get sweaty and I get all tense. And um, Yeah, and like, how can I accept that, right? But the reality is, is the only way through is through acceptance. And that might actually, you hearing that might actually take you a while before... And you might have to, you, maybe you'll click off this video now and you'll, you'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm going to go watch another charisma on command video. And if I just stand up straight with my shoulders back <laughs> just enough or, um, you know, like learn this pickup artistry technique or something, then that'll fix me. But no, I mean, and, but here's the thing, trust your intuition as well. If you don't trust me, then go do it. And, and that's the thing is you can't lie to yourself either. Like if you say, if you be like, if you resonate with what I'm saying and you're like, yeah, but I actually really just want to try these pickup techniques or something. And then, but you'll hear what I hear, what I'm saying and some part of you resonates with it until you try those pickup techniques and you actually validate it in your own experience. Some part of you will probably still want to do that. So my invitation to you is just go do it. Like, see if it works, see if you can see if it actually works, you know, like, uh, these social ego boosting techniques and stuff like do it, do it. And I don't say that, like, I'm just being like on a high horse and I'm this woke person who's, um, further down the path than you or something. No, you actually have to trust yourself. (laughs) It's like saying, let me just try and think of an example. Okay, so say you have a, like a father or something and they, they keep giving you financial advice or something like you have to, you have to invest, you have to invest in the, uh, whatever it's called, the index 500. And then you're like, yeah, but you're a teenager, right? And you're like, yeah, yeah, dad, whatever. Like, I know it's good, but. Like, I'm just going to keep playing Minecraft (laughs) or or like RuneScape or some shit. I don't know. Um, You know, it's good advice, but you're still going to do your thing anyway. Right. It's like that. So, yeah, trust yourself, essentially, is what I'm getting at. All right. So, where were we? 
we've got to stop the blame game. We have to accept. Oh yeah, okay. It's with acceptance. So ultimately, you have to, and I can't emphasize that enough. You have to be so willing to live with social anxiety that the notion of getting rid of it from your experience doesn't have to fully go away, but the fact that it is, um, doesn't have to fully go away, but it has to really dampen down a lot that you have to be totally okay with living with this social angst, which then creates the platform of loving understanding and integration of the parts of you that are quote unquote broken. That's so, that, if, I can't get over how critical that is. Because even when I was doing self-help, even when I was like going on these meditation retreats, I still had this subtle mindset that I am this broken self and I need to fix myself. The subtlety of, and I, here's an example that I know a good, uh, really good trauma specialist Gabor Mate has used, Dr. Gabor Mate. Say you're feeling socially angst, uh, social angst and you say to yourself, there's two ways you can look at it. You can be like, why is this here? Or you can be like, oh, why is this here? What are you trying to do for me right now? Social anxiety, you're trying to protect me. This might not make sense, but we'll get to it. You're trying to protect me from being rejected by people so that I can fit in. Like, oh my God. Rather than, oh, why is this here? God, I'm such a, why am I always like this? Ah, you know, a huge difference. And even if you're meditating, you can be like, hmm, why is this here? Why, why, why am I so broken? Hmm. Oh yeah, as it is, I'm just witnessing it as it is. But why the fuck is it here? <laughs> you know, like trying to get rid of it, right? There's a, and I can't, there has to be a heart level commitment to understand yourself at a, at a loving level unconditionally loving level and that you can't fake that and again it might take you some um, some practice to be able to engage that loving acceptance and here's something that almost moved me to tears that I want to uh, I watched my uh, primary consumer or uh, person I primary consume content from the other day Angelo DeLulo and you know what he said he said that in all of human history, this is this is a relationship that's really helpful that you need to develop toward your so your social anxiety. After my burp, <laughs> you have to have this relationship of okay, here's this emotion that has been repressed and passed down from generation to generation to generation, cross human, transhuman transmission between other humans, and it's been rejected. It's been cast out, kicked out of the door of life, of, of the human experience for so long. And now here in this day and age where you have access to resources like this, this video, these books, teachers are abundant as all hell. You have access to welcome that broken part of you back in, put a blanket around its back, sit it down with a hot chicken soup and just have a a loving conversation with it. Whereas everybody else up until this moment has pushed it away and denied its, its presence in your psyche. If you can connect to that when you, with your social anxiety, that will be the key, a very key and fundamental thing rather than trying to fix it and cleave it out of your experience. Right. Okay. What else we got? I think we've covered everything. So I just want to rehash that trusting your intuition, doing what works. You know, I'm a pragmatist. I think I didn't really talk about that, but you're doing what works. I'm a pragmatist. You're going to do what you got to do, man. Like I'm going to list a bunch of things later and we'll go into them and in, uh, practically in a, a little bit just to give you an idea. But like if something doesn't work for you, let's say you've been doing Vipassana meditation for like five years. And you're still really like, if you're being honest with yourself, you're still really suffering with social anxiety or whatever, whatever it is. Um, yeah, you have to like engage that with this. 
I just went blank. <laughs> just went blank. Uh, yeah, okay. Be willing to do what works. So, okay, Vipassana meditation. You know, even my even though my meditation teacher, Essen Goenka, tells me who I, you know, I've been drew, drawn him as well. See him right there on the right from that view. Even though my teacher tells me that if I cross-pollinate techniques, I'm doing it wrong and I'm... And this is a really tender subject. You know, people can create these whole identities around practicing like a certain way of practice or believing a certain thing about how my spiritual practice is going. And if you deviate from that in any way, especially if you've been doing it for like 10 years, of course, you're not going to be wanting to try something else. And I'm going to leave that to you to decide. But, and you have to trust yourself if you're going to work through this. But maybe, just maybe, there's something else that you could try. I listened to an interview with a woman who did, who was on Angelo's channel, Simply Always Awake. She did Vipassana for something like 20 years. And you know what she did? She still felt like she wasn't, you know, and she attended so, like countless 10-day meditation retreats. She did hours of meditation. Her name was Christina Guymond. Christina Guymond. You can... Uh, G-U-I-M-M-A-N-D from memory. It might be wrong. Christine Guymon. Uh, it's on Angelo's channel, Simply Always Awake. And she did Vipassana for that long. And you know what? She, she, she did this practice called TRE. She's like a uh, trauma release exercise. And she's like, man, this is what I've been wanting from meditation the whole time. Right? So just be maybe open to the possibility that there is another way of doing things. So doing what works is another thing that I'm, I'm a big believer in. And for me, that looked like, you know, I started with Vipassana meditation or first it was like self-help. Then it was Vipassana meditation. Then it was, um, um, then I tried like self-inquiry, like the Ramana Maharishi, who am I? And now it's just like a mishmash of whatever works and, uh, you know, suffering is reduced significantly. I don't really hold a view of how I need to practice anymore or anything. It's just super dynamic and it's hard to put that into words on how that unfolds. But I'll, I'll do my best later to tell you what's worked for me. That's been most effective and we'll come back to that. Okay. And I just want to point out as well, maybe you're feeling this uh, sense of this video is getting really long. You know, I've got all these things to do. Um... Like, a, yeah, and you're feeling that pull to want to click off the video. And I'll just ask you again, just just out of kindness. I'm not doing this because I care so, so a huge amount about, like, vanity metrics of, like, how long you watch the video. But how much does it mean to you to actually work through this, to work through this social anxiety? I mean, you can go and watch another video and distract yourself and do something else. But, yeah, just maybe sit with that feeling if, if it's present for you. If it is. If not, keep watching. All right. So let's go into, uh, this is a big one. So dropping into the body. <clears throat> I described earlier how in my experience in high school, uh, how I didn't have any idea that how emotionally repressed that I was. So I would be in the lunch area at school and I would be talking with people, right? And I would just be so fidgety and just like, I remember one of my friends used to give me so much shit because I was like um, playing with bread and like <laughs> playing with food when I was, um, and just like pulling out bits of crust and stuff off the bread. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I just, yeah. And I know now what that was and it was uh, emotional repression. I was disconnected from the body I essentially put in other words, I was so anxious moment to moment that I had no context for. I, I wouldn't even know to call it anxiety or social anxiety at that point. But I was so socially anxious that my body was like all of the energy in the body was up here. And I was like fidgeting, trying to get away from, from the body, from feeling the gut, from feeling the heart, from from feeling just anything in my body. I was like numb, basically. It was literally my body felt numb in those situations. 
it felt like maybe if I could describe it if just from memory and it might be distorted because it is a memory but it felt like this airy disconnected feeling like I was like oh god I just gotta um and yeah so that is emotional repression now if you're coming to this video there's a good chance you probably have some idea of the body but maybe you don't you know there are people who practice spirituality who I've met for years and they don't even they don't know what it means to connect to the body All right so and and this is the cultural norm we're so disconnected from our emotions and I should say, when I say the body, I basically mean you're connected and you're aware of your emotions. Somatic. You're, you're aware of your somatic or your emotion experience. Somatic just means emotion. Right. So, what does that even mean, right? Like, to be aware of the body. I'm just going to assume that you don't really have any understanding of it at all. And maybe you do, but this, this part will still be valuable for you, I think, even if you are connected to the body and you've done a lot of like meditation and stuff. And this is really simple and it might seem idiotic, but I want to just walk you through what it means to be connected to the body to the best that I can and just going off the cuff a little bit, but here's what, here's what we'll do. First things first, just literally grab your arm right now or your leg anywhere on your body. And if you're watching this video, you might, you might be, it might feel a bit heady. Like you're, you're trying to like take everything in and understand everything. But what, what you, what I want you to do right now is literally just grab your arm and pinch it. Give it a shake. <laughs> Give it a wiggle. <laughs> feel that. Feel it. See, I can feel that right now. It's like a tickly, stretchy feeling, right? That you're in your body. You're, t you're feeling your body literally pinch the body like that is the body that is the somatic that is like the emotional experience i'm pointing to right okay now let's try something else and i want you to do this with me don't think about it your mind will be like oh yeah i don't want to do it what will people think of me if my mum walks in or my bro my girlfriend walks in or my partner my wife don't think about it just do it if this is because the, the socially anxious mind is very hyper aware of what other people thinks of it as well. So if you, if that isn't a problem, there's actually a good, a very important use case that that has, but just be aware of it, that, that, that impulse to not engage in these sorts of things will be there very likely because it doesn't want to be seen by other people or whatever. So maybe just move yourself to another room if you need to or whatever. But, um, Let's do this. Let's let's take three deep breaths. So don't think about it. Just do it. Three deep breaths in right now. And then relax. Relax the body fully. Breathe in. And all the way out. Relaxing the body fully. Like the shoulders, the legs. Breathe in. And out. Okay, and now just sit with that for a second. Maybe you just noticed the difference in your experience. I did. I was in I was feeling like my energy was up here a little bit and now it's grounded more down into the body. Maybe you feel a little bit of relaxation. Maybe not. Maybe you still feel angsty as all hell or um, just uncomfortable. Just simply taking three deep breaths, a very simple exercise, and there are good ways to do it, like three, bre three seconds in, four seconds out. Three seconds in, four seconds out. The body literally rhythmic, the ryth uh, rhythmic movement of that engages your nervous system to actually literally calm down. So that's another way to do it. But let's just re-enter that space again. You're feeling the body right now by doing that. If you noticed any shift in your demeanor by doing that, and if you didn't do it, I guess you'll just have to take my word for it, but I encourage you to do it. Let's try it one more time. Let's take a really deep breath in, just one. And all the way out. Okay. Now, from this place, this might be a little bit uncomfortable, so a little bit of a trigger warning. I just want to point that out, but you're totally safe. 
just bring up a social situation and I want you to pay attention to your body, how you feel. Bring up a social situation right now in your mind. Maybe it's at the workplace. Maybe it's with God, maybe even your family. I've been there. So a situation that will very much trigger you and just maybe it's already happening, but just feel the body. Notice how it's tightening, how it's like kind of worried. It's kind of freaking out a little bit, maybe. Okay. That's being connected to the body. And you might actually notice as well, if you're feeling particularly anxious around that thing, is your mind doesn't want to go there. No, no, no. I don't want to feel that at all. Yeah. Social anxiety. It's this feeling like I got to get I got to get away from it. I got to get away from it. That's what the, the program is saying right now. Right. Let's just let that be there too. The fact that you want to get away from it. If that's there, if that's there for you, if it's not, it's okay. Just feel, just feel the emotion of that social anxiety that's there. And just say, you can be here. You can be here. Maybe you've never done this before. Maybe this feels weird as hell. Maybe there's that impulse to want to click off the video right now. Because you're like, what the hell is this dude talking about? What's this impulse? This like body, body connect, woke hippy dippy spiritual bullshit. I don't know, whatever the mind does, right? Let me just ask you, how well is that working for you? Yeah. So let's come back to the body. Envisioning the um, social situation and feeling it and just saying, you know what? I know I've pushed you away for so long, but you can be here right now. Even if it's for five seconds, just for five seconds, I can feel you. You can be here. Yeah. And if, if nothing's coming up for you, maybe you're feeling like, oh, I'm not, I can't do this. I'm not really anxious or anything. I don't feel anxious. Even though I've had social anxiety, I don't feel anxious. That might just be because you're still learning to connect with the body. So you might need to do this a couple of times to get the hang of it, just to, just to feel like, because your body is so habitually trying to disconnect from that feeling when you're in that social situation that you might be so unfamiliar with it that you can't even connect to it right now. So you might even want to try this a couple of times. Just take a couple deep breaths, just acknowledge to yourself, I'm safe right now. I can feel this. There's nothing wrong with feeling this and connect to it. Ultimately, we need to be able to connect to that socially anxious feeling and be so open and loving and accepting to it that we can be feeling that and essentially have broken through the attitude of, I need to get rid of this, right? So imagine you're looking at me, talking to me right in the eyes, which is very hard to do with someone with social anxiety, but you know, I've been there. (laughs) Uh, I'm with you right now. Just imagine, just look into my eyes as I speak right now. If that actually triggers social anxiety in you, okay, feel it right now. Feel it right now. And just say, you can be here. Thank you for protecting me. I know I've pushed you away, but you can be here. Yeah. And your body's it's probably one of jumping out of its skin right now. Maybe if you have really strong social anxiety, like I don't want no, no way, no way I can feel this while looking at someone in the eyes. You can. It's fully within your capacity. You can handle every emotion in your experience. Especially social anxiety. It's a good little exercise, right? Maybe you've, that's the first time you've ever accepted that into your experience. And you can come back to this point, like what are we at? An hour in the video and you can try that again. Keep coming back to it. But that's what it takes. You have to be able to break through that. And I remember feeling that. I remember being like, you know what? There's certain situations I cannot accept social anxiety. Like say there's someone in the workplace, right? Who's like really angry and you can stop looking at me in the eyes if you want. But, you know, I encourage you, I actually encourage you to look at me in the eyes because 
it'd be a good challenge for the for the video, uh, for the sake of this video at least. Um, I remember thinking like, if I there's no way I could look at someone in the workplace, for instance, in the eyes, you know, and I'm in that maybe someone who's like particularly like angry or something, right? Because I've re- I've repressed anger in my life, I, and. I look at them in the eyes and I'm trying to have a conversation with them and I'm like, oh God, there's that feeling. Oh God, I can't handle it. And I I just have to look away. I just can't. (laughs) Um, But ultimately, what if you could be with that? Do you have to change it? Do you have to get rid of it? You can and you will if you, but you have to come at it from this loving place of acceptance. You can't push it away like I mentioned earlier. And you will be able to get to that place. And you are safe to do that. And you are allowed to do that. To feel the discomfort. To feel that uncomfortable emotion. Yeah. Because I... And I I remember one of the core motives of wanting to get away from it was because I can't let people see me be anything other than like happy. Or um, I can't show the fact that I'm uncomfortable to other people because they'll reject me. Right, these are the programs that keep us safe. You can see why it's there, right? If I show this negative emotion to people, they won't accept me. So, boy, I'm definitely keeping that mask on so they don't see that so I can be accepted. Yeah. Okay. Now, I mentioned anger repression. That might have uh, thrown you for a curveball like you didn't know what the hell I was talking about. Like, uh, anger was something that I repressed. And, like, what does that have to do with social anxiety? <clears throat> has a lot to do with social anxiety. In fact, I think a lot of people who are socially anxious uh, are either repressing anger or sadness or grief in their experience. So, if I'm hitting the nail on the head right now and you're in... Just ask yourself. If you intone to yourself right now and you can even imagine, like... My hair's doing some weird shit. I just noticed that. <laughs> if you imagine your family right now, just close your eyes. Just imagine them in a circle around you and your, um, and your mother or like your mother and your father, maybe your brothers or sisters or your immediate caregivers if you didn't have a father or a mother or whatever. And just say in tone to yourself right now, I can express anger to you. You might even say something like, I hate you. I hate what you did there. Right. And does that create shame in you? Like, oh, no, no, I can't. No way in hell I'm expressing anger. I can't do that. Right. And that's okay. Just let that be there. Nothing wrong with that. I just want to point that out. Or maybe it's sadness. Can you show sadness to your partner? Have you ever been able to show anything other than like a happy, happy persona to your partner? Maybe you haven't. Yeah. So that's just an example. And, and this is just an example, but often a lot of people, and I, I know from my experience, I repressed anger. I couldn't show anger to other people. And I know that contributed to social anxiety. But I want to point out that social anxiety isn't just this one single thing. It's not like, I have, oh, okay, I have social anxiety. That must mean there's this one problem wrong with me or like this one issue that I'm coming up against in my life. It's not like that at all. Social anxiety is particularly challenging to talk about because it's so dynamic for each person. And that might deflate you a little bit, but it won't because essentially the tools that I work with and what I'll tell you about, they address they basically give you the tools to become your own therapist to work with the dynamic nature of uh, of social anxiety. And I'm not gonna, I'm not trying to sell you on anything or anything like that. I'm just telling you some heart to heart advice on what works for me and for other people. But yeah. So what often happens is we feel socially anxious because of our beliefs that we hold about ourselves. And I wanted to talk about beliefs earlier. Did I miss it? Maybe I did. And I'll, I'll, I'll weave it in here. So, we have beliefs about ourselves that we we didn't consciously choose, right? We didn't we didn't sit down and be like, you know what? I'm going to believe this about myself. Uh, before, I, before we were born, we like signed the contract, right? Of like, I want to believe um, 
I want to be a liberal. <laughs> I want to, I want to, um, repress my emotions. I want to, you know, like be attracted to people with brown hair. Like, who the hell knows? We didn't choose that. We, we absorb beliefs from our upbringing and our social microcosm or whatever, our, so, our social matrix that we're, we're, um, shown growing up. So for instance, I was shown anger wasn't okay to be expressed. I was shown that it's not okay to show emotion um, in some contexts. And a lot of this is subconscious. People don't, people don't even overtly tell us this, but we still believe it. Um, we absorb beliefs about ourselves. And there's a very good reason for it. For instance, I can't express anger might be a belief because if I do, I won't get love. You know, naughty, good boys don't show anger is a very common belief, especially for men. Um, you know, our schooling systems teach us that. And what, you know, what, does, what does this have to do with social anxiety, you ask? And that's a very good question. I'll come back to it. But I just want, really want to emphasize this. It does relate very significantly to it. Because, or it might be sadness. Boys don't cry. Why are you being a pussy? Girls don't cry. Stop being a little whingy baby. You know, you told this as a kid when you're six years old and then you grow up and into that belief. I can never show sadness. You sacrifice your authenticity in order to fit in. And that becomes this social, the mind mask of our experience. Okay, I can't show that. Otherwise, I will lose love or I'll lose validation, right? So, it's serving a purpose and this helps feed into the unconditional love aspect. It's serving a purpose. The fact that you're anxious or you can't express anger or sadness is because it's trying to keep you safe. It's like, man, in the past where I've shown anger or sadness, I've been punished for it. Like my family told me that if I show that, like it was basically, you know, it's subliminally communicated. Like you're not part of the family. Go away and sort yourself out until you can get yourself back together. So a little child who is very dependent on a family, of course he go he, he represses anger. Of course, what else is he going to do? Like he's not going to get food or he's, he's going to be like, seen as unworthy by his caregivers, his primary caregivers, if he doesn't show, if he shows anger. And, and that can come from anywhere. It can come from your brothers. I'm just fucking, this fucking hair. <laughs> um, it can come from your brothers. It can come from your, you know, okay, we're just going to have to deal with this shitty hair. Uh, it can come from your brothers. It can come from people in your social matrix, it, like growing up in school or um, say you had a friendship group, right? And they, they shunned people who they're like, you know what? I really hate it when people show their true selves. Yeah, well, maybe not that. I hate it when people show anger. It, what's wrong with them? <laughs> I don't know. And you take that on and you're like, oh God, okay. I'm never expressing anger again. So my belief is that we form... Social anxiety ties into this emotional repression because we're so disconnected from our authentic selves and that's what precipitates anxiety. The by the feeling that we get from not being able to show anger is essentially uh, anxiety because we're not connected to our authentic selves. And the body's way of showing us that we're not being authentic is by creating anxiety. So you can see how then social anxiety is a very multifaceted thing. It's very interesting. It's a very complex thing. And you have to have your own tools and things available to be able to actually mine and examine, okay, what is this about? Let me give a couple of examples. Social anxiety might manifest as something like you see someone who's angry and they're showing passive aggressiveness or something like that. And you've repressed anger. No way in hell I can, I can show anger. And what that does is when you're around them, you feel anxious because they're triggering that repressed part in you. That's saying like, oh man, I can't, um, that, that if I show anger, I'm not going to get love. So of course you feel anxious around them. And then we could call that social anxiety. Is it social anxiety or is it anger repression? All right. So 
it's I, I guess it's kind of useful to call it social anxiety, but it's really like a, m- a multifaceted thing. Or let's use another example. Let's say like you have a belief that let's say you grew up in a family where you were, and I think Jim Carrey, Jim Carrey had this right, and he had really bad depression at one point. He, I don't know if he had social anxiety. Maybe he did, but he he was the the comedic relief of the family. That's how he got love in his family. He's like, if I'm funny, dad and mum love me. So I'm going to be the funny guy in this world. But what that did is it disconnected him from his authentic self in other ways to the point that he became horribly depressed at one point and had a spiritual awakening through that. Because he's like, who the hell is Jim Carrey anyway? If I can be all these different characters. But anyway, so he put on the funny, the funny guy persona but he could never be angry or I, I don't know, maybe, maybe he was angry, but, um, he was disconnected from his authentic self. So ultimately we develop these personas to protect us, to get us the love, but ult- but they have a cost. We sacrifice authenticity for validation. And a lot of it comes back to a need for validation from other humans or love or to not feel ashamed of ourselves. Some very core things. And they're all trying to protect us. So this anxiety is your friend. And it's very dynamic. And there's no one size fits all glove, one glove that fits all social anxious, socially anxious people that's gonna like quote unquote fix them. Right, so we need a lot of patience. And I wanna remind you that this is something that is ultimately going to be your best friend. It's it's the thing that's going to wake you up more, this social anxiety. It's not a bad thing right now. You might be thinking to yourself, like hearing all this stuff, you might be overwhelmed, like, God, there's so much wrong with me. Holy crap, I'm not going to be able to handle this. I just want to feel some fucking relief, you know, like, fair enough. I, I get it. It's debilitating. It's hard. And you can feel like that. It's But we can't play the victim for, for long enough before we eventually have to realize that, okay, you know, this is the hand I've been dealt and I have to be patient and I will get through this and that's going to make me better and more connected with people than it ever has been, ever, uh, than I've ever felt. I'm actually going to finally feel human. I promise if you commit to this, you, that's what's going to happen and I'm on the path with you. All right, so here's the beefy part. The part that, if, and look, if you skip forward in the video to this point where the practices, the part of it where it's like, okay, I just want to fix this helplessness, this social angst that I'm feeling, I get it. But without having watched leading up to this video, this a lot of these won't really impact you. You're going to have missed a lot of juicy information that's like, that feeds into this. Um, so I would recommend if you skip forward to this point, I would go back and, and watch it and make that commitment. Just remind yourself like, you know what? I'm not going to distract myself. This is something that's been affecting me for a long time, very significantly. Why not just give my attention to this video, this, this guy, if I, if I trust him, if I get a sense of trust from him, like, and just try it, you know, like what else are you going to do? Watch TikTok and browse and distract yourself. Like, fuck man, go ahead. But yeah, anyway, practices. Now, I've broken this down into a couple of sections and I just sort of brainstormed a couple of things. I put it into beginner, intermediate and advanced practices. But I I just want to point out that there's no real like barrier. There's no like beginner can be used in conjunction with advanced and they have similar outcomes in terms of making progress toward working with this feeling of social anxiety or whatever. So... For instance, the first one I put is going out into nature. Very beginner, anyone can do it. It's beginner because it's and it's very accessible and it's like, it's not spiritual or taboo or anything. It's just like, okay, if I go out in nature, this will help me. And um, what going out into nature is one of my favorite things to do. Like I, I love going on hikes. I just did a couple sunrise hikes with my good friend, John. Um, yeah, I've always, and I've always, I've grown up camping. I love camping. And, um, yeah, but what it does is, and especially as you get more sensitive with the, doing the emotion work, doing the spiritual practice, whatever you do, uh, you'll notice, you'll actually be able to feel the effect that nature has on you. You know, some of the most, um, 
beautiful motion work processes I've done. I've just like, I remember I went out for four hours. Uh, I was feeling so wound up in my head over uh, a recurrent issue that was coming up for me in my relationship with my beautiful partner who's behind me here and my stepdaughter. And I just went out and into the forest and I just laid on this rock in this uh, rainforest, totally just by myself with no one with me. And I just sat there and I just processed and processed and processed. Like, what am I believing here? What am I doing? Like, why am I, why does this keep coming up? And, you know, not coming at it like, why, why is this here? But this like, just really wanting to understand like, okay, like, you keep coming up. And I, I really just want to get to know you and be familiar with you. Like, what, what are you trying to protect me from? Like this sort of attitude. And just being, I don't think I could have done it at home in this little white box that I'm in right now or anything like that. But being in nature, you feel the energetic shift. And again, if you're, if you're disembodied, you don't really know what it means to be in your body. Fair enough. And that might sound woo woo, but uh, it definitely is a thing. Like in, I think in Japan, they have something called forest bathing. It, there's so much science behind being in nature uh, and the effect it has on your nervous system to regulate it. So, my suggestion is if you're feeling particularly anxious, maybe you could start to develop a na- uh, relationship with getting out into nature, like just going on a hike, exerting yourself. Exercise is also good. So, why not combine exercise, like doing a trail run in nature if you're particularly anxious? That's going to put you in your body and you also have nature holding you to do it, right? So, say you had a long day in the, at w- the workplace and you're feeling horribly socially anxious. And you're like, okay, shit, here's that feeling. I remember Sam said in that video, I'm just going to go out in nature. I'm just going to give myself 30 minutes to go out and drive to a local park. And why not add running or some sort of fitness on top of it too or something. And just let nature help you ground you back into your body and maybe release some of that tension that's bound you up. God, my mouth is so dry from talking so long it's producing this video. Without any breaks. Oh, God. So, going out into nature, I think anyone can do that. Very accessible. And, um, yeah, highly recommend it. Now, I mentioned earlier, investigating beliefs. Now, this this can be beginner because it, I think it's very accessible. But it's also really the core of what we're doing here. So, this is incredibly foundational, investigating beliefs. And this is where I actually want to talk about it. But anyway, I'll just go over it again, just because of, I want to stress how important it is. Anybody, no matter if you're secular, if you're like, you know, hardcore atheist, if you're spiritual, whatever, no matter what you are, investigating your beliefs is probably one of the most powerful things you will ever do in your life. Questioning everything about yourself. When we're socially anxious, we have beliefs about ourselves that we feel like are just so ingrained into our soul, into our psyche, into our psychology, that there's almost no way we're going to be able to ever extract them. And um, for some people, this might be a little bit weird to hear, but I'm just going to say it anyway, because it's true (laughs) from my own experience and many others that I'm connected with. Essentially, our beliefs, we almost hold them in our body. And just to um, provide evidence for this in a way, imagine being in a, um, imagine if you're socially anxious, what's it do? Maybe it tightens your throat, tightens your gut, tightens your heart, usually down the central part of the body, all the way down to your gut, right? That's what, um, that's what tightens up or locks up basically. So we, our body has a response. And essentially what happens is we have beliefs velcroed to those emotions. And I'll I'll talk about this in a second, a little bit more, but the beliefs that we hold about ourselves can be let go of. They can absolutely every single one of them. The, The belief that I can't get over social anxiety, that's a belief. You probably, maybe you're clinging onto it very tightly for good reason, right? It's kept you safe. Like, like I was talking about before with the need for love, it's, it's what gives you social acceptance in a way. It's safe. It's familiar. Like if I, I'm the socially anxious one who 
is always happy and smiley that I and, and I'm trying to recover from it you know that whatever identity we have that's a belief <laughs> uh, and it can be let go of and really it's quite simple just seeing a belief clearly for what it is is how you let go of it letting go happens as a byproduct of seeing what's happening clearly so like oh wow I'm believing about myself that I'm socially anxious and you might feel that in the body where is that in the body and then it's like, okay, I see you. Thank you for protecting me. You don't, you don't have to. And there are, there are other modalities you could like, in, for instance, engage the inner child. Like, where did I first believe that? And, but very simply, that will take you an extremely long way. Just seeing what's happening clearly. Like, what am I believing about myself? All right. So investigating beliefs. And I, I remember Angelo DeLulo, my, um, primary, again, my primary, I'll say teacher, I just consume his content and I go to his retreats and stuff. So he's sort of my teacher and his partner is also my teacher. Uh, But yeah, he's, he said that if there's one thing I would recommend to any human on the planet, it's being willing to investigate your beliefs. Question everything about yourself. Why do I believe that? Why do I believe that liberals are worse than uh, Democrats? Uh, you know, and keep going down, take it to the root. Take it to the root. I could, I could make a, and I have made a whole video on beliefs actually, and I'll, maybe I'll link it here. I'll link it in a card here at the hour and 22 minute mark. Okay. Let's make a note of that so I don't lose it. Oh, do I have a pencil? Anyway. No, I'll remember it. I'll remember it. I don't want to waste you guys time. Okay. So... What else we got? Okay. Meditation, another beginner thing. All right. And if you're super secular, you don't want anything to do with meditation. I get it. But there's so much evidence out there that it's kind of laughable to think that meditation doesn't have positive benefits. Like I could make mind, the make mindfulness movement. There's so much um, scientific literature out there. I could reference on uh, how it, how it benefits and helps regulate the nervous system and but really, I think with social anxiety, if you particularly are interested in working with it for social anxiety, I would do some sort of embodiment meditation. So body scanning, like Vipassana, the, like they do on, teach you on the Vipassana meditation retreats where you go part by part by part by part by part, feeling through your body, literally scanning with your attention all the way down through to your body. And your body might be so numb from feeling sensations in the body at this point. But again, just pinch, that's a sensation. Tightness in your neck, that's a sensation. Anything is like feeling heat is a sensation, right? So scanning through the body, you could find heaps of videos on how to do body scanning or something like that, but that that is critical. Uh, Learning to develop a relationship and understanding that you've been disconnected from your body and reconnecting to it. Uh, Without that, I don't know if you can really fully have that radical, compassionate acceptance towards social anxiety because you're still in your head. The emotion is still buzzing underneath and wanting you to do things and, um, you know, making you put on this front and, you know, anyway. Yeah, so being connected to the body, meditation is a very powerful way to do that. Okay, and so this is the intermediate section and this is something I've actually taken up quite recently and it is so powerful that I, uh, I really want to emphasize it. body practices. So it, maybe meditation doesn't work for you. Um, again, and what works for you? Let's figure out what works for you. What do you pull toward? Try that and do that. Don't listen to like my prescription, my, um, you know, my meditative prescription, my simple hack that's going to, no, fuck that. Uh, just what works for you, trust yourself. Body movements. I've done qigong. I did a um, I, my beautiful partner uh, behind me here in the photo, uh, Talia. She got me a thirty day qigong challenge with a guy called uh, Lee Holden. I just got the course on Udemy. It was only like thirty bucks. Like, and it's like you know you're doing eight minutes of qigong every day, which is just slow body movement br- with breathing. Uh, that'll put you into your body. And it's amazing how it can affect you. Uh, but you can also try things like Tai Chi. Uh, yoga is a big one. The actual core of yoga, I believe, is... And I don't know much about yoga and all that. But uh, is to put you into your body. Like you're feeling the body movement, the stretching of the body. Like 
whatever it is, you know? So if you're socially anxious, it's just going to help reconnect you to the body and get you out of your head. Yeah. Um, so yeah, body movement, martial arts, huge, you know, learning to, if you've repressed anger, coming into contact with anger, letting it out, you know, I think a lot of people, um, I have a good friend of mine, Michael, who repressed anger a lot. And he said it was the best thing he's ever done for him. He didn't say any, he didn't do martial arts or anything, but you know, these are the sorts of things that, uh, can really help engage and put you in the body and give expression to repressed emotions, which contribute to social anxiety. Uh, okay. And now this is something that has been very effective for me. And here's a book I would want you to read if you feel called to it again, trusting yourself. The book is called Focusing by Eugene T. Gendlin. Now, this book was, uh, I'm saying this is intermediate, but like, man, it's, a, it could be advanced. It's all you really need, honestly. It's, uh, it's that powerful in my opinion, but it sort of requires that you have a connection to your body. And he, I think he actually walks you through how to do that in the book. So it's a good read, but what, what you're taught in this book focusing is what I illuminated earlier that we have beliefs and thoughts connected to our bodies and focusing essentially is um, provides a stepwise process on like, okay, I'm feeling social anxiety in this situation. How do I then connect to it, extract that belief, that core belief that I have about myself and release it, not just at the level of the head, but at the level of the body, which is where we hold the trauma, the tension, the social angst. And it's like uh, my experience of working with this for quite a while, like over maybe like a year and a half is it's like, it's what I always wanted to do. Actually, it's what I always wanted to do from the start of when I started this journey of doing self-help or even like the Vipassana meditation. I always wanted to engage that core programming that held itself in the body. Focusing is probably the best entry level book that I've come across. And please recommend more that you found helpful in the comments. Uh, to help other people, right? As a community here, um, focusing, like read that book. It will, it is like amazingly powerful if you really engage with it in my experience, my opinion. And trauma release exercise is another intermediate one I'd recommend. Again, uh, and the theory behind this one is essentially that you, the body in nature is, it shakes, we shake as animals. If you watch any animal in the wild go out, when they have a trauma response, say like a gazelle gets like shocked by a lion, it runs away, it gets away. What does it do? It shakes. It literally like shakes its body and releases energy. Although humans have been socially conditioned to not do that, right? It's so... And even I have shame around it sometimes. I'm like, God, I, I do it with my partner sometimes and we... um. We both just told each other the other day, like, yeah, I kind of, it's kind of awkward just to, just to shake your body, you know, like, and, um, but trauma release exercise is very powerful. And I speak from direct experience that it is like, if you're feeling tension in your body or social angst, say you just finished up at the workplace or like a social gathering at the end of the day, and you do a short little round of TRE, just shaking the body. Um, wow, it totally shifts everything. You may not have felt relief like it in your whole life because it's an innate natural body mechanism that um, basically puts you into your body and releases that energy because otherwise what we do is we just stays in the body and you just feel that social angst and tension in the shoulders and it just literally sticks to you like glue. But if you shake it and release it and as this same sort of thing works with um, like Tai Chi or Qigong or martial arts and stuff. It's just another way to release energy from the body, except it's more directed at trauma responses, which um, social anxiety is basically. Okay. Now, and I, I just want to point out, I'm throwing a lot of things at you and we're almost at the end here, but I just want to say that 
uh, there is so much you can you can do and I don't mean to overwhelm you and I know if you're feeling a sense of helplessness and this feeling of like man I just want to fucking get rid of social anxiety you know and I'm throwing all these things at you um, it can be like oh, I, don't, I don't know what to do I just don't like, and you might even feel overwhelmed I just want to acknowledge that and just point out that yeah I, I get it it's frustrating but you have to figure out what's working for you so I'm throwing things that I've found most useful at you so that you can actually start to work with them. Um, just not work with them, but pick the one. So I'm getting a bit hazy because I've been speaking for so long. Um, work with the one that rings true to you. So maybe, you, maybe you'll just say like, okay, this video was really helpful. I'm going to pick the going into nature thing. Or I'm going to try Qigong. I've never tried it. I've never tried any other modality. You know, I'm, I'm a hardcore atheist or whatever, but uh, which you probably aren't if you're watching my videos. But um, if you are, that's fine. I'm just going to try Qigong. I'm just going to try one session of Qigong and just see what it does. Uh, that's what's calling to me right now. So trust yourself. All right, now I'm going to get to two advanced modalities that uh, have probably been the most uh, impactful thing and uh, the first one might scare the shit out of you. And that's why I've put it under advanced. So buckle in. <laughs> but uh, ultimately, this is where we're moving toward and which, which you have in your capacity to do this. And you will get there if you commit to these sorts of practices and uh, willingness to you know, see through all your delusion that you've accrued unconsciously, not, not as a product of your own fault through your life. This one is authentic body-centered communication with another human one-on-one, -on -one. right? Scary. Maybe you want to, maybe there's that impulse right now. I got to click off this video. Hell no, I'm talking to someone authentically and let's lovingly accept that. Okay. I want to get away is here. Thank you for protecting me. Like, let's let that in. So the idea with this is uh, maybe you have a friend, a close friend who you could send them this video or something and uh, or just um, maybe someone may drop a comment in, in this video and someone and say like, look, I'm looking for an authentic body centered person to communicate with. And, um, maybe I'll even do it with you. I don't know if, you, if I've got time. The idea of that, like, I want to attract people like you who want to do this. You know, I want to speak with people like you. That's partially why I want to make this video is because I want people authentic people who are willing to see through everything all of their delu uh, let's say delusion but there's not really delusion it's like these things that are trying to protect us um, so here's what you do with authentic, authentic body centered communication you sit you talk to somebody and you don't say anything that isn't useful or relevant to the situation and you open yourself up completely to what you're feeling looking the other person in the eyes and just being like you know what right now I'm terrified I don't want you to see me right now and then the other person says you know what yeah I'm sort of feeling that too here's what I believe about myself I believe that I can't show any emotions to anyone ever you're like yeah holy shit I feel that too and then maybe from that, that exchange, you're like, oh, okay, we're, we're, now, the, now the baby, like, now we've seen what we're both feeling, right? Because humans are so conditioned to not show this. I can't, I, I can't show anybody this crazy feeling I'm feeling or like this social angst, but it's like, holy hell, we're both here to acknowledge that we're freaking out, right? <laughs> yeah. Scary, right? scary maybe you'll think there's no way i can ever do that and you know fair enough like but you can and you will eventually eventually you're gonna have to get to that place if you really want to overcome this and i'm just throwing a bone into you that you have it within you to do that and you are safe and you always are safe to do that unless someone's like overtly coming at you with a knife or something don't do it then <laughs> i'm feeling fear right now hmm. <laughs> you'd be like come here boy <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay. 
So authentic body centered communication. Now you could find someone by dropping a comment here, maybe um, asking one of your close friends. Maybe if you're close with a family member, you could ask them. Um, you'd be like, oh, fucking car, are you kidding me? All right, this is the first time I'm gonna have to pause the video because I don't want that going off. All right, I'm back. I don't know why that happened, but that was my car out the front of the house. <laughs> Someone trying to break in. Anyway, we're good. Uh, so, we talked about authentic communication with people. Huge deal. And I want to point out that this should become your practice from now on to the best that you can. You're going to be training in the field right now with this. Now that you've seen this video, and I know that you care about authenticity if you've made it this far, the invitation is to keep on engaging more and more authentically with people. Now, you, it's it's not easy. I know. I, I, I goddamn, I know. But going into public and like showing a little bit more of you, it's like a turtle putting its head out of its shell. It's like, okay, I'm going to show I'm a little bit uncomfortable here. I'm actually going to show some authenticity. Okay, back in the shell. I'm back. Put, put the mask back on. That's okay, right? Because again, these things are trying to protect you. It's not like you're overnight, boom, okay, I'm no longer socially anxious. I, I still get freaking socially anxious all the time, but I just like have such loving acceptance for it now that when it comes up, I'm like, okay, I could be like this for the rest of my life. And sometimes I don't as well. I'm not going to say I'm like perfect with it. So I'm still, I'm still learning, but um, always being, always learning. Okay. That is now your practice. Go forth. <laughs> um, and I just want to remind you, you have it within you to do that. I did. I got like, I'm getting better at it and I'm still getting better at it. It's not like, yeah, it's an on overnight thing. So make your commitment to make a commitment to yourself that I'm just going to show a little bit more authenticity. You know, you don't have to show that you're an absolute wreck or anything. Like you don't have to uproot your social matrix entirely that you've created over these years unconsciously but um you know just invite a little bit more authenticity and willingness to be with that uncomfortable feeling and show it a little bit more and yeah that's all you have to do and just bring an unconditionally loving acceptant um view toward it okay next modality <laughs> that reminds me of a pewdiepie video next meme <laughs> I don't know, maybe no one will get that, but um, next modality is somatic modalities uh, around somatic again, meaning emotion. And this one is called the Killaby inquiries. It's pretty popular in the sphere that I'm in right now and like awakening and all that. But essentially it's, um, I'll just say it's focusing that book from Eugene uh, Gendlin that I recommended for the intermediate one but like on steroids. So I won't go into how the Kilby inquiries work. Um, Scott Kilby himself, who created it, co-created co it with this other gentleman. I can't remember his name, but um, they've created these tools that essentially enable you to become your own therapist. So whenever you have social anxiety, imagine being able to go into that emotion so fully and then feeling the beliefs and releasing that from the body and releasing that view from you, but actually doing it. <laughs> like, you know how you, you read all these things like self-help and um, all this crap um, that's out there nowadays that it's like, you just got to change your view, just use positive affirmations or something. And it doesn't do shit, right? It works for a little bit maybe, then it doesn't, which is, you know, it's just a step in the path. But um yeah, Killaby Inquiries is like the one modality I've used. Oh, not the one, but all the ones I've listed so far are good. But Killaby Inquiries has been very, very powerful. 
And I was very fortunate to have an amazing friend of mine, Michael, uh, teach me this. Like, he, I was really suffering, like really struggling in my spiritual path. And I, I remember I asked him, I'm like, Michael, you know, like, what do you recommend for this? And he sat me down for these three hour sessions and we just went deep into uh, using this technique. And I'm forever grateful to him. He's, um, yeah, he's got a huge heart. So, yeah, if you're watching this, Michael, you're the man. Not saying that lightly. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so somatic modality. So we've covered. I'm going to stop there. There's this, and again, I want to invite you to uh, trust what works for you. Try something that works for you, and um, I'll, I'll just comment on what's worked for me and what I use currently. So I currently use a combination of the Killaby inquiries, what I just mentioned, uh, plus focusing plus trauma release exercise and just in the combination with all of the tools that I've sort of accrued over my lifetime, like Vipassana, um, radical acceptance, it's it's all like this soup of techniques that are dynamically recruited because I'm a pragmatist, like what I do whatever works, right? Just to, because ultimately what are we doing here? We're, we're reducing suffering in our experience and um, yeah, just do what works, you know, that's my belief. Uh, why else are we here? We didn't, we're not here to suffer as humans. We don't have to be here to suffer as humans. We don't have to look at everything f- through a view of like, this is how it is. Just do like, you know, like whenever that happens, I think it's a fixation. So just do what works, <laughs> you know? If you're like a hardcore Vipassana meditator and you're like, I can't do anything outside of, um, no, uh, you know, whatever, the, whatever SN Goenka teaches or something, then just like do it, you know? And, um, I would say there's limitations to that, but, you know, trust yourself as well. Uh, so that's what works for me. And I, I won't say that any works better than another. So it, every person's going to be different. You know, I, I, what I, what I would teach someone if I was working one-on-one with them would be something like, uh, one, trust themselves, but two, just what, what works for you, man? Like, what, what do you resonate with? Fuck all the other videos out there that say you need to do this. It's like, no, what works for you? Yeah. Okay. So, I just want to wrap it up, guys. Um, and this is, I think this is going to be important to hear. Just to, just to summarize, the key thing that I want to get across to you if you're struggling with social anxiety is I know how hard it is to deal with it. I really know it affects every part of your life. And you wouldn't have made it this far if it hasn't had a big impact on you. So I want to commend you on committing and actually watching this video the whole way through and just hearing some dude in Australia talk about what's worked for him. You know, it's like, it can feel totally helpless. Like, and maybe, maybe you want to go and watch more videos now and do all that. And I just want to say, I think this video probably has most of what you need. Uh, and you could, you could go keep watching more and yeah, do whatever you want, but, uh, you have everything you need in your experience right now. I've given you a lot to work with and a lot of, um, angles to approach this with and really the core of it. But, um, yeah, and I just want to commend you. Like you're not alone. You're not an alien. You may have felt like there's something so wrong with you your whole life and no one's ever talked about it at this depth with you. And it's so taboo and you could never talk to even your closest friend about it, but everybody's feeling it. And humans are chronically repressed. It is the norm to be like, to act like we have it all together, right? So many people, it's it's so full of shit, right? (laughs) So we don't, but um, yeah, for whatever reason, just in this day and age and the causes and conditions, it's like, we got to act like we have it together and for good reason because it gets us love it gets us validation all sorts of things right so we're not here to blame other people or put ourselves on a a high horse or anything like that but i I just want to acknowledge you for connecting to authenticity you're the person i would want to hang out with it's nothing wrong with you even if your mind is telling you right now and your body and your feelings are saying right now like sam would never want to talk to me I'm just something, I'm so broken, right? But no, that, again, that's just a belief. And you can uproot that. You're perfect just the way you are. 
Yeah, I bet that's uncomfortable to hear, but let that in too. This is going to be your biggest asset in your life to connect you to authenticity and to a richer, beautiful human experience, no matter who you are. Even if you're like 60, watch 70 watching this, it's never too late. And uh, yeah, you've got it in you. You can handle this. And I want to give you a hug if I could, but... (laughs) And if you're a guy, no homo. (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) Cut that out. Cut that out. That's what my mind's saying to me. I shouldn't say those things. Um, Yeah, and just don't be afraid to leave a comment. Let me know where you're at. I'm uh, I'm free to talk, uh, mostly, but... And let me know if there's anything that you think you would have included in this video as well. I I just want to know like what your experience is like and where you're at and if there's anything else uh, of importance that would contribute uh, to this picture that I've painted in this video, you know, and I'm I'm not perfect. There's probably other things I could say, but this is my best guess so far and what's worked for me. And uh, yeah. All right. I won't leave you any longer. Won't waste your time. I wish you well. Much love to you. You've got this. Bye bye. Also, Alice wanted to be in the video. Hey. Say hey. Hi. Hey. Hey. Nice tooth. <laughs>